This is Story Robot. Welcome to r slash pro revenge. Our first story of today is, half brothers threatened to sue me over 16k. It costs them 158k and possibly their parents marriage. When I, 25f, was 3, my grandparents passed away. They set up a savings account in my name. The account was meant to be accessed by me when I was 21. At that point it contained just over 300k. My grandparents left me a letter saying they would like me to share the money fairly with any other Smith Jones children, meaning my full siblings, dad is a Smith, mum is a Jones. By fairly they meant that they wanted me to assess the situation and judge for myself what was fair. I never had full siblings, but I have two half-brothers, Mac and Joe Smith, who are dad and stepmom's kids. Due to the specific wording my grandparents used, I legally never had to give Mac or Joe any money. However, I see Mac and Joe as my brothers, and as the money came from our grandparents, I felt that the fairest thing would be to assign each of us 100k, so we all got an equal sized lump sum, and I figured that when Mac the youngest turned 21 and took his 100k, we could split any remaining money. When I turned 21, dad suggested I buy a house with my 100k. I found a place I loved but it was 130k and I couldn't get a mortgage, so dad said I should borrow 30k from the account. I did, figuring I could pay it back before my brothers turned 21, and I have been repaying it. The account should be at 208k right now, but due to me withdrawing and then repaying that money it's at 195k, so I still owe 13k. Joe turned 21 recently, and as I was giving him his 100k, Joe noticed that there was less in the account than there should be. I explained and said I was going to put it all back before Mac, now 19, turns 21. Joe told Mac and both boys said I stole from them and owed them the full 13k back plus 3 grand of interest that they felt they would have gotten, and they wanted it all paid by this summer, which gave me less than 6 months to bring the account up to 211k. I said I'd do it, but over 2 years as planned. The boys then wrote up a contract to that effect. I went to sign it, until I saw that it said 6 months to pay it all back. I wouldn't sign as we agreed on 2 years. They said I should figure it out as they were entitled to that money and would be seeking legal advice. Later that day I got an email, clearly written by them, saying that they intend to sue me for the 16k, plus whatever is currently in the account, and additional damages and emotional distress on top of that. At this point in time, I'd given Joe about 50k of his 100k, because he wanted it in installments. I responded that legally, they were never entitled to any of it, and given their attitudes, I'd say they've already received an amount I deem fair, so that 50k was all they were getting. I then got a barrage of texts, calls, and emails yelling at me for going back on our deal. I blocked them. They then took to social media, saying that I was trying to screw them out of their inheritance and rallying our extended family into harassing me over this, and it mostly worked as a lot of people messaged me. However, I got a message from this guy called Chris Smith. Chris said he was 27, and claimed to be my half-brother. I had never met him before, but he sent me photos of him as a kid with our dad, grandparents, and me. He showed me that he also had an account with 150k in it, and a scan of a letter from our grandparents, saying this money was meant to be shared fairly among dad's illegitimate children. Chris also told me we have another half-sibling, who is 18. He'd been looking for me for a while, but only found me when dad shared Joe his post which had me tagged. We checked with a solicitor to make sure, and as the boys are legitimate, they aren't entitled to anything in Chris his illegitimate kid fund, and as they are my half-siblings, they aren't entitled to anything in my Smith-Jones kids fund, either. I sent the boys a letter formally telling them to back off, stop posting about me online, and enjoy the 50k because it's all they're getting. The day they received the letter, Chris got a PM from dad, asking if the boys can have some of Chris's fund. Chris also said no, and told dad we'd met. I told Mac and Joe about Chris and our other half-sibling, with Chris's permission. So it looks like my grandparents, knowing about Chris before they passed, set up two funds. One for the kids dad had with my mother, who was still his wife when they passed, and one for children born out of dad's affairs, presumably to make sure no one tried to screw anyone else over out of hurt feelings. I'm getting a lot of beep, but holding firm on my decision. The boys have realized that I won't back down on this and it sounds like I've caused a schism at their house, as Joe has all the money and no intention of sharing so Mac is now feeling twice as screwed, plus stepmom apparently did not know about the other half-siblings, or that my half-sister was born after she and dad got married, and she's made dad move into a hotel. It sounds like dad is looking for a long-term living arrangement outside of the family home, because it looks like she is not letting him move back in. Dad is begging me to reconsider, but honestly I'm done with all of them except Chris and my sister. Our final story of today is, busybody stay-at-home mom neighbor harasses me until my restraining order kicks her out of her house. I lived across the street from a very bored stay-at-home mom whose excess idle time turned her into an insufferable busybody. 
her husband backed out of the driveway and slammed into my roommate's car parked on the curb. He apologized, gave us his insurance info, and took care of it. He was never a problem, because he accepted responsibility for what he did. His wife, however, demanded that we never ever park any cars at the curb again, because we can't get out of our driveway otherwise. The street was very wide, she was just completely unable to accept that the accident was her husband's fault, and figured we were somehow responsible for it, ergo we were responsible for preventing it in the future. We told her that we would avoid parking there whenever possible, but that we still had the legal right to park on the street, and that if necessary we would still do so, and that it was her and her husband's responsibility to avoid hitting other people's legally parked cars when backing out of the driveway. She wasn't happy with that answer, but just told us we better stay out of her family's way, and stormed off. One day, she came storming over, banging on the front door, cussing us out. We got her on our security camera saying, if you don't move that beeping car in the next 10 minutes, I am going to beeping total it with my truck. It'll be your fault, and you'll have to pay for the damage to my beeping vehicle. To this, I simply responded, I don't know whose car that is, but I didn't park it there. I have you on camera, so if you do anything to that car, I'll have to call the police and hand over this tape. She then threatened to sue me for invasion of privacy for recording her, and still insisted that we move the car, even though it wasn't our property. We just ignored her, and she did not do anything to the car, we did keep the recording though. A few weeks later, I had a friend visit from out of town. He parked his car on the curb, and then started unloading some stuff from his trunk. She came storming out, screaming and cussing at him, I have told you repeatedly never park your beeping car on this curb. If you don't move it, I am going to beeping total it, and you can beeping pay for a new god beep car, as well as the damage you do to mine. He tried to calm her down, and asked if there was somewhere else he could park, and she replied, you can park it in hell, because that's where you'll be after I beeping kill you. Unfortunately for her, he had his dashcam running the whole time, and it captured everything. He called the police, and she was arrested for threatening to commit vandalism and for threatening violence. A few days later, she left a long-winded hate letter in our mailbox. It was written as if it were an open letter from the entire neighborhood, and it basically said that, nobody knows who you are, and, everyone wishes you would move away, and, nobody wants you living in our neighborhood. Thing is, she forgot about the security cameras. I took the video of her opening my mailbox, which included her taking all our letters out of the mailbox and rifling through them, and I gave them to the post office. This led to her getting arrested for a second time that week. After that, we used her two arrests, our collection of security and dashcam footage, and her letter to get a restraining order against her that actually prohibited her from entering her own home, and then we called the police every time we saw her because she was in violation of the order. She ended up having to live in a hotel room, and her husband came over, apologized to us, and asked if we would drop the restraining order so his wife could come home. I told him I would do it, but only if she wrote me, my wife, our roommates, and the friend of mine she threatened a one-page apology for her harassment, and that she would promise to never ever contact us again for any reason whatsoever moving forward. I received no apology, and the house went on the market a week later. Some beeping people. Thank you for watch- Error, error, error. Problem detected. Not enough subscribers. Please subscribe like and comment.